Welcome guys to Renowned Explorers International Society. This is going to be my first video on YouTube. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, pretty excited to be starting it with a game that I think so far is approaching perfect. It is an amazing game. Uh, it costs $20. Um, I picked it up after watching um, Total Biscuit review the game. And to me, it just seemed like the perfect game. If you're the fan of things like uh, FTL, Faster Than Light, or Final Fantasy Tactics, or any turn-based tactics game with rogue light or rogue-like elements, uh, this game is going to be right up your alley. You can sit down and play through um, one round of this game in about two hours. And you know what? That's what we're going to do. It's going to take us a little longer than two hours because I'm going to be explaining as I go through. So this is both a let's play and a walkthrough because I want to explain uh, what's going on as I do it and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to click new game. Um, in this game, you can either do discovery mode or adventure mode. Discovery mode is kind of like uh, the casual version. Um, you do that if you want to just kind of play through, retry stuff when you lose. Um, that kind of stuff. Just discover the game without pressure. Um, adventure mode, on the other hand, that's the roguelite version. Uh, this is where the real meat of the game is. Um, and you have some difficulty options. Uh, the game was developed for a classic difficulty. This is uh, the normal difficulty, the original difficulty. This is where it was developed. Um, and then there's some easier versions. Uh, these ones disable achievements. Uh, and then there's a harder one, which I will get to. Uh, so on classic, I've played the game twice through all the way um, on classic and beaten it twice so I think classic is pretty good um, I'll probably play on the more difficult one later um, after I get through the game so for this walkthrough uh, slash let's play um, I'll be playing on classic difficulty uh, so let me take a sip of my drink here which is a Taco Bell cup uh, refilled with soda. I never get soda when I go to restaurants. I'll always get water, but and then refill it later with soda. So, all right. So here we go. We need to select a captain. Uh, these characters are available to, for us to select as a captain. Um, you start with four. I've gotten a couple extra because I've beaten the game a couple times. So in order to unlock a, um, another character as a captain, you have to have them on your crew and then beat a certain number of expeditions. For example, um, for Earl, to unlock him as a captain, we have to complete two expeditions with him, uh, which is only like part of an actual game. A game is five expeditions. Um, so this is only two. You beat part of the game with him, you unlock him. Now, each of these characters lends themselves to a particular style of play. Uh, I want to play a very aggressive style for this um, for this walkthrough. Um, and so aggressive is the red icon here. Uh, your fighters are your best um, and scouts. Scouts are kind of all around. They're very um, glass cannon-y. Um, I'm going to pick Victor because uh, he's our only um, fighting style captain. Um, and Victor will give us this perk. It's called For the Glory. I get 50 plus 50% 50 gold from each encounter. Uh, it's a very good perk. It makes us want to do all of the encounters that we can. And that extra gold helps us buy better equipment. Um, so by the end of the game, we'll be very, very well equipped, uh, which is great. Uh, here it gives you a little rundown of what he is. Uh, he's a balanced fighter with high armor, no real weaknesses. He's very all around. Um, which is good. Um, he's great for aggressive and friendly crews because he has aggressive and friendly attacks. Uh, and then suggest two people for you to play with. Um, I, the first time I played through, I played with these two, um, which is this guy here and this girl, right? Felipe. Well, that's Conway. And where's Felipe? Oh, he's the scientist. And so I'd played through with those two. Uh, and they were good. Uh, you can beat the game that way. I think you can probably beat the game with about any configuration of, of crew. Um, and then down here it tells us his ability is tactician. Uh, and so your abilities are used in random encounters uh, throughout the game. Uh, and I find it's really good to have crew members who are specialized. So I won't be picking another crew member with tactician um, because that would overlap with his ability and I don't want to do that. Um, so if you're building your own crew, don't overlap your abilities. I can also click details and see his abilities here. Uh, there are three kinds of attacks in the game. There are aggressive attacks, friendly attacks, like these icons up here, which is aggressive, 
friendly. Then there's devious attacks. He doesn't have a devious attack, um, which is why he's not good in a devious team. Uh, he's only good on aggressive or in, um, friendly teams. And um, then his abilities, he gets a friendly attack and an aggressive attack. So he's very focused. Um, I want to compliment him with, uh, see when you select crew members, you can select anybody. I want to compliment him with somebody who's really, really physical. Um, so that together they can probably just, <laughs> they can punch things down, punch it right in the face, which is what I want to do with Ivan here. Ivan is great on aggressive or devious crews. Um, he's an athlete. Which is good because it does not overlap with Victor. Uh, his details uh, show us that he has a, a good attack. Um, his speech, so this devious speech is good, but its hit chance is only 80%. Um, so you want to be careful about that. Um, and then his hit chance on his friendly attack is also only 80%. Look, he's good at one thing and one thing only which is punching things in the face. And so that's what Ivan is gonna do for us. Now we need to complement these two characters with someone um, who will round out our team. Uh, now, if we pick somebody who, like him for example, uh, if we pick somebody with abilities that can make us excited, that's great. Excited, excitement allows our attacks to do more damage. Uh, so we could do that, that's why he's one of the recommended people for this uh, build. Um, then there's, there's some other builds you can do though. Um, for example, if we were to pick her, uh, she has a spear. Um, let's see what she can do. Uh, she can make people terrified. Uh, terrified is good, uh, people do less damage when they're terrified. Um, she can make people confident. Uh, confidence not as good, that makes people do more damage with their speech attacks, which we're gonna be using physical attacks, not speech attacks. Um, let's see what we have here, we have a survivalist. Uh, she can make us excited. That I like that. Um, she can make people enraged. Making people enraged is very, very good. Uh, making them enraged to give them gives them negative armor. Negative armor means that our attacks do more damage. Um, if I choose her, I will not have a way to be devious at all. Um, again, I can be friendly or I can attack. That's about it. And I'm honestly 100% okay with that. So I like this team, this is good. We will be very attacky. Uh, we can make people, uh, Vic, both Victor and Kiwi here can um, make people enraged, which will lower their defenses so that we can do more damage. And you can see up here it tells us that we are very, uh, very aggressive, which is fine. So let's do this. We picked our three team members and we're gonna go through. Uh, so again, if you're following this for a walkthrough, I would just pick a captain I would pick uh, this guy as the captain and then just pick the two crew members that suggests. Um, or pick these two and just kind of follow along and we'll, we'll do it. So we just got our renowned explorers international society membership. Victor wants to make a big entrance uh, and wants to investigate a mystic appearance, a Druidic stone circle. So there's two starting maps. Uh, you'll either get this one with the Druidic stone circle or another one. Um, you can kind of just keep restarting if you want until you get this one and then follow along. But rumor has it that uh, Celtic, or Celtic, I believe it's Celtic, uh, Druids set up a sect here long ago. Uh, you can go through the tutorial on your own time. Um, but let's explain what's happening here on our map. Here's our characters in the bottom left. Uh, when we get experience, we'll be able to level them up from this screen by clicking on them. Um, I hit escape there to get out of that. Uh, in the upper left, uh, you have a button that can manage your crew and your inventory. Uh, if you have extra items, uh, which could be useful, uh, especially items that give you skills, you might want to carry those with you um, for particular challenges. Um, but you can equip your characters here. Uh, this button here is for research papers. Don't worry about this uh, until after you get through. Um, these four uh, uh, icons up here are gold, status, research, and insight. So gold status, research, and insight. Uh, you gain those as you go through these adventures. Um, and they correspond to these icons you see here. Okay, so gold status, um, research, and insight. These are your currencies that you'll spend after each adventure to gain more upgrades uh, and more benefits. Uh, this is your resolve. Anytime a crew member dies in battle or falls in battle, you lose one resolve. Um, certain quests will also make you risk resolve. Um, in order to, like if you fail a quest, you'll lose resolve as well. If you ever get to zero resolve, you are dead. In the um, 
adventure mode. If you're in the discovery mode, um, you can just keep retur retrying stuff or whatever. So, Up here is our supplies. We have seven out of seven, which means we get seven movement. Uh, you see here it tells you how many supplies each uh, movement will cost. So we have seven moves, essentially. Um, over here are buttons to access your menus. We will probably not use those very often. So here we go. Um, this is how much supplies it costs to move. Uh, these buttons tell us what kind of encounter we will get. Uh, so here we'll get research, here we'll get research, here we will get status, gold, and a battle. You always, at least I, like to do all the battles that you can. Um, I would suggest doing them, you gain experience, um, encounter, you gain tokens from those battles that are very good. Um, they get you a lot of resources. So I always try to do the battles, so here we go. We'll probably get our first battle right away. Some cuddly sheep, all oh, are fond of the crew and keep surrounding you. It makes it hard to move and you have to do something. Engage! Okay, so not all of the battles are because somebody is trying to kill you. So where, where this game really shines is the battle system. I love this system. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of explaining uh, to get you to understand what's going on. Um, so I'll explain it and then as you play, you'll, you'll understand it even better. I'm going to go through and explain what each of these stats do first. Okay, so starting on the bottom right, the easiest one is Grit. And grit is essentially like luck. It gives you a chance to dodge anytime someone attacks you. Um, or to just to ignore the damage. So, Grit is good. Um, our characters do not have a whole lot. Uh, she has Grit because of the type of class she is. So she's a scout, so she has Grit because of that. Um, movement is this bottom left number so she can move five spaces three spaces and three spaces so she can move like <laughs> the entire map that's crazy i've never had a character with th uh, five movement before okay these two are related attack power and armor attack power you use it for um attacks that say attack so most aggressive attacks i think maybe all aggressive attacks use attack power so uh, you see like his attack is power is 100% times his attack, so that's how much attack damage he'll do. Um, and you can kind of click on the sheep and see that the sheep have like no defense, so <laughs> that's kind of funny. So we're probably gonna murder them, it's gonna be great. Um, so that's, that's what these two stats are, is attack and defense. Now, where the game gets interesting is that there's also speech and speech defense. Your other attacks, um, which I call attacks, but in this game they're actually not really attacks, are something like like this one, for example. It says, attitude friendly, power is 80% times speech. So you'd use your speech in order to use that attack um, instead of your um, power, okay? So like even this one is speech, okay? Speech, um, he has an, an attack, speech, and speech. Attack, speech, and speech, okay? So only one of these uses the attack, the other ones use the speech. Um, attributes. So uh, different characters will be better at different kinds of attacks. And the reason that this is important is because there's three kinds of attacks in the game. There are aggressive attacks, devious attacks, and friendly attacks. Um, I believe these ones are actually called like speeches, uh, and this one's actually called an attack and the rest are speeches. Uh, but in any case, what these represent um, are three different kinds of attacks, like I said. So he only has um, he has an aggressive one, a devious one, and a friendly one. And I believe that they all have that. It just depends on the situation, depending on which one you want to use. Okay. So let's get into it, um, and then I'll show you uh, what some of these things mean. Um, I showed you what the stats mean. I told you kind of what these mean. Uh, in order to... Basically, the number of attacks you use will determine what kind of attacks you use and the number you use will determine um, how the battle gets resolved. So if you want to resolve the battle in an aggressive way, you use aggressive attacks. In a devious way, you'll use devious attacks. In a friendly way, you'll use friendly attacks. Um, we get a bonus, it shows us here, if we can do this in a friendly manner. So you know what? Let's try to be friendly to these sheep. So I'll move over here. Now I'll use his friendly speech. And you see that it's gonna do this much damage and it's gonna make the target uh, excited. Um, excited means that this target will do more attack damage if they use um, attacks on their turn. I could also just punch it in the face. 
But we're gonna go for the extra token and we're gonna try to be friendly. Oh, hey sheep, how you doing? And so any attack you do to him will injure his spirit. Um, it's kind of weird because um, a physical attack and a devious or friendly attack or speech have the same effect. Uh, they both hurt their spirit, um, but it kills them in different ways. So I like the flavor of it. So we're, we're gonna try to encourage him. Aw, you're a nice sheep, yeah. And so that takes his spirit out. He becomes excited and he'll run off the battlefield. And he's gonna stand over here and cheer us on. Um, because he is excited. And so with her, um, you know what, we'll run up and we'll probably use an attack because I want to kill one more sheep. I don't want there to be three sheep attacking my team because there's a chance people will die if that happens. So I'll go ahead and use an attack and end my turn. Okay, now there's some important things happening as the, the sheep attack me here uh, that I want to talk about. On the left, you'll notice after the sheep attacks, on the left, you'll notice uh, it says friendly, and it says I have one point in friendly. I have zero points in devious and four in aggressive. So if I want to make this encounter be a friendly encounter, I need to use a lot more friendly attacks to make that happen, okay? Um, I need to get more points in friendly than I have in aggressive. It's going to be tough to do. Um, at the, up at the top, you'll see that I am aggressive. The enemy is friendly. Uh, because of that, uh, we get plus 20 speech defense. Because I'm being a killer, it's hard to convince me not to be. Um, just to the left of that, uh, you see an icon with a number of uh, grayed out uh, spaces next to it. If, if you look at that, in order to make this become friendly, in order for my team to become friendly, I need to get six ticks. Uh, every friendly attack I use will give me one. Every enemy I kill using a friendly attack will give me a bonus one. Um, so I need to get a lot to be friendly again. Uh, and I need less to be devious. And over here it shows you the interaction. These are kind of like elements in a way where devious is effective against um, aggressive, aggressive against friendly, and friendly against devious. So I'm just going to use a bunch of a friendly attacks and hope that I can get the attitude of this battle to change uh, towards friendly. Because you know what? Um, I'm tired of being mean to these sheep. Um, another good thing about friendly attacks is that they can often be used on your own characters like this as heals. So I'm going to use a friendly attack on him uh, and heal him. And she's going to be friendly to this sheep. And that might be enough for me to have a friendly demeanor for the battle. But it was not. Okay, so you see I still resolved it aggressive, uh, unfortunately. Um, because I resolved it aggressive, I get two encounter tokens. Uh, encounter tokens at the end of the encounter will give me gold, status, and renown. Um, and she also gained a temporary buff. It lasts until the end of the expedition. So she gets more armor and attack power until this expedition is over. So here we go. A wise man from a long time ago once said, a knocked out sheep cannot follow you. Today this adage has been proved to be true and timeless. The crew continues without those stinking animals following you. Uh, you'll get different flavor text depending on how you finished uh, the encounter. So we're going to continue exploring. Again, I see an encounter here, and I want to do that. I want to gain as much of experience and encounter tokens as possible. So, Hungry Wolves are following me. Only one way to get out of this. Now, because Victor is a tactician, um, I get this bonus here where all of my crew members gain tactically prepared. So I get to click that. And I'll show you what tactically prepared means um, when we start this battle. So I get a bonus here if I do uh, the battle in an aggressive manner, which is good for me because my team is very aggressive, so I like that. So here are my current buffs right here, and it says tactically prepared plus 10% attack power and speech power. So my characters are all more powerful because of um, Victor's buff there. I'm going to start with my big guy. Uh, he has a lot of attack power. I think he might have the highest one on the team. His attack power is 39. Yeah, he's a lot higher than everyone else on attack power. So I'll start with him. Uh, punch that wolf. Take it out. Uh, Victor might kill this wolf as well. Um, so, yeah. My, my characters right now, because of the tactically prepared, um, are very good. She doesn't have very good defense. So I kind of don't want her to get hit. So I'm just going to move her there and end my turn. This wolf can't get through these guys uh, unless he has a ranged attack, which I don't think they do. 
All right, well, now Victor can probably just end this. Um, the first island is not too hard. Uh, the boss battle on this first island can be difficult, unless you level up. If you level your characters up by doing some battles, you're good to go. Um, so this time he gained a bonus, uh, plus five armor attack power. I gained two uh, tokens plus an extra one uh, because I completed the battle in an aggressive manner. So that's very good. And we're gonna gain two campaign tokens. Okay, so at the top you notice I'm collecting tokens. Uh, the encounter tokens are from fighting things, and those give me, like I said earlier, gold status and renown. Um, gold status, uh, I told you before, are currencies you will use to spend at the end of this. Renown is what you need in order to win the game, uh, so it's always good to get renown. Uh, campaign tokens, um, which correspond to the green icons, which there aren't any right now, um, but campaign tokens give you status at the end, and I'll explain that later. Okay, so my three people have leveled up. So we'll level up Victor first. I have the option of going, um, either upgrading my tactician, uh, this ability, or gaining diplomat. Um, I find it's better to specialize. Um, so I'm gonna keep him going tactician and specialize in being a tactician. He also gained the ability Peace Treaty, which is a friendly ability. Um, it's an area of effect ability. Um, it has a cooldown of four turns. Uh, it does 50% of my speech uh, damage. Excites the target. Uh, hits everyone in the range, um, but also gives them minus 20 attacks. So this is actually, Peace, peace Treaty can be really good for friendly encounters um, or for reducing people's attacks. So it's a, it's a good ability. So I can upgrade Athlete or get Naturalist. Again, I'm gonna specialize and keep going Athlete. Uh, he gained a Pinning Strike ability, which does a lot of damage. It makes it so that the enemy is unable to move and makes all the enemies want to attack him. So he's kind of like a tank, uh, paladin type character. He guards everyone else. Um, again here, I'm gonna get survivalist, keep her specialized. And then she gained a devious attack. Uh, let's see what it does. Target becomes enraged, uh, if it's negative. I'll explain that in a second. Our target becomes enraged, giving it minus armor. This is why she's so, so good. Um, she also gets bonus damage for other enemies that are next to her. Uh, she gains bonus grit off of this, so she's harder to damage, uh, but she does pull aggro. So again, she kind of is like a, a rogue type character who dodges, um, attacks, and taunts the enemy. All right, so we have five more movement. Um, I kind of need to start moving this way. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to go here instead of going back along these, because this one has a research and a naturalist challenge. But I I have a survivalist here. I don't have a naturalist, so uh, we'll see how this works out. It, uh, cr uh, the crew travels, traverses an area that looks like it has never been trodden before. Victor finds a weird, colorful stone that looks valuable. The crew goes to take a look. Sadly, a closer look shows the stone is no gold or gemstone, and they leave. Uh, it's because I do not have a naturalist. Now here's an H challenge, As athlete, naturalist, or survivalist. I have an athlete and a survivalist, so we'll go here. What a weird place. The ground is getting increasingly soft, and the air starts to smell foul. Weird rocks stand between the crooked trees. Victor thinks you might have reached a pretty special point in the forest. Let's investigate farther. While looking around, Kiwi notices uh, clues of fossilized remains. The clues get, the crew's getting excited. So now what I can do here is I can try uh, to spin a wheel. Essentially, I have a 26% chance of succeeding 10% or 20. I pick one of these. Um, if I succeed, I get uh, extra collect, study, and a bonus collect. If I fail, I lose resolve and supplies. I really don't want to lose resolve or supplies at this point. So I'm just going to go uh, excavate the safer areas and see what happens. And it turns out I actually got a treasure out of that, which is amazing. Treasures give you a lot of renown. They give you extra insight and bonuses. Uh, this bonus is permanent. I gain one extra encounter if I resolve an encounter devious. So that can be good uh, if I ever want to be devious. Um, I'll get extra bonuses. And I'll also gain, uh, you see over here on the right side, I gain two study um, just for finishing that. So here's the circle we're going to. Uh, I really, uh, I want to do more of these, but I'm running low on supplies. Uh, it's really bad if you run out of supplies. Uh, there's more places back around the back. So I'm just gonna kind of work my way around. Man, this is gonna be tough. Uh, I mean, I can go ahead and I just wanna show you what happens when this happens. Uh, this is probably the best choice, but here we go. 
When I click this, it's going to scroll a wheel. Um, I have a 20% chance of seeding, 8% chance of failing. Let's go. No, okay, so I obviously failed. Um, when I fail on this one, I think probably nothing. I don't get anything, so that's unfortunate. Uh, we'll go to the next area here. What an amazing place. The nature here has remained untouched for ages, and the forest cliffs hold some valuable ore. The crew could spend days here, but to really get a result, it needs to focus on one task. Would you spend the day collecting research or valuables, or spend extra supplies to get both? You know, I'm going to spend the supplies because I don't have them. <laughs> Which may sound weird. I'm going to get a debuff after this. We're just going to go ahead and do both. I want I want all the tokens. One of my crew members is going to get... Uh, Ivan loses attack power. That's bad because Ivan uh, is a very attacky character. Um, this icon here means that I can get uh, supplies. Which will let me explore a couple more times. Which I'd like to do. So I'll go here and see if I can get some supplies. I gained three supplies. That's very good. Um, so I don't get a negative. You only get a negative if you have um, or a debuff if you have no supplies after an adventure has finished. Um, so since I gained supplies, I don't get anything uh, negative happening to me. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go here. I can get research tokens. I'm a cultural challenge, which uses a diplomat or archaeologist, which I don't think I have. Um, and then something odd. So something odd can be a lot of different things. Uh, sometimes it's a treasure. It's very good. So let's take a look at whatever's worth investigating. Oh man, I don't want to lose resolve this early. It's really bad to do so. You know what? We're just gonna wrap up the studies. I'll take my study and we'll we'll get out of here. That's fine. All right, we're gonna go here and we'll try to get. Um, some more study which that was just all flavor text which is fine all right we'll go to our stone circle and see what happens with our last supply the druidic the druidic circle must be somewhere around once you get there this expedition will come to an end you can come back to this place when you wish to continue later are you ready to go yeah i'm out onwards the crew vigorously searches through the dense trees. It doesn't take long before you find it. A standing stone circle. Um, the ruined main menhir must contain valuable information to study. It will surely skyrocket your reputation of the renowned explorers. However, you hear familiar laughter. Behind you stands a French explorer, Revelur, who is considered to be the most promising of the renowned explorers. He got here just before you did. Thank you, amateur. <laughs> Under Rule 24B of the Explorer Mandate, fellow explorers should remain, uh, should help each other out. And I really need to take the main men here to impress a lady. Explain all the hard work you've been doing to get here. Come on, Victor. <sighs> he looks at me as if he really, really cares and continues. Oh, wow. Uh, this is most unfortunate. Maybe you should talk about this with my most intelligent and diplomatic scientist, Lady Cassandra Shafiq. I'm sure she'll hear out all your problems while I take them in here. Hey, that's not fair. Wait a minute. Before Victor can stop Revolu, his crew scientist, Cassandra, steps forward. Hello, fellow renowned explorers. I heard you have many problems, no? Let me help you. Yes, she's not letting us pass. All right, so we have to fight this girl. Now, in boss encounters, uh, usually all you have to do is defeat the boss. There's a bunch of other enemies. But just the boss is who I need to defeat. Now look, I get a bonus if I do this in a friendly manner. Um, and the bonus is very good on these battles. So I really want to do this friendly. Um, it's going to be very difficult to be friendly when most of my best attacks are um, aggressive. But we'll give it a shot. That's not a good start. Oh, this can be good. That's his uh, peace treaty, which is a very good attack, um, as I mentioned earlier. Killed somebody, took out a couple others. We're gonna run her up here and try to excite him by being friendly. Hey there, guy. And so we took him out again by being friendly. Um, because everyone's being nice, physical attacks get a bonus. This is good because what I'm gonna do is be nice to these guys, then use my physical attacks, which get a bonus on her. Uh, and just <laughs> straight up take her out with a physical attack. Um, so that can be very good. So we'll go ahead and end our turn. 
Now the problem with that plan, uh, I was just reconsidering it, is that if I use one physical attack, it makes the battle aggressive, which will probably make us finish the battle in an aggressive manner, uh, which we do not want. So it's actually, that's probably not gonna work. Um, I can use some devious attacks maybe. Luckily they are not hitting me with anything, so I really don't have much to worry about. Uh, the RNG gods are being kind. All right. So uh, this is her devious attack, which hits everybody around me? Yes, we like that. Um, I did not, it turned to the power of the encounter to devious. That's fine, uh, because after this, I'm gonna be using pretty much all nice attacks. So I'll just be nice to this guy, which will kill him and give me two uh, friendly points here. Um, he's not a very nice person, but what I can do is use a physical attack without turning the battle aggressive. That's the key. You want to keep make sure um, what you're about to use doesn't change the course of the battle unless it has to. And that makes her unable to move and it makes her want to attack him. Uh, those are both good things because my guy's about to die. Somehow she still attacked him uh, despite all the aggro, but that's okay. Um, this is why I didn't want to lose resolve earlier. If I lost resolve earlier, I'd be in trouble because I'd be dead. Um, so I'm glad I didn't lose any resolve earlier. We should be able to wrap this encounter up with some friendly attacks here um, on her. Should our attacks hit? Um, let's see. Friendly. Okay, this should kill her. 80% chance. We'll go for it. All right. So there we go. Resolve the encounter in a friendly manner. We get the best uh, bonuses, which we'll see what happens in a second. So she's very content with you. Oh my, you're quite kind, yes? I'll be rooting for your rise, yes? Please take some research papers we collected. Sorry that I couldn't help with your problems. She, follow, she leaves to follow her master, I guess, who somehow managed to get away with, a, with the whole men, men here. So we got some research, so we get two study, and we gain speech permanently increased by one. Um, so that was really good. Oh, there's a hooded figure who appeared on the scene. A druid pops out of the forest. Amazing! I saw you handle that encounter just now. Your friendly solution is admirable. I'm honored that someone like you is looking for our history. Allow me with, uh, to help with the divination. Please tell me, what is the dream you chase? So we get to choose here uh, what our dream is, and we'll get a treasure or something based on that. So uh, let's see what our options are. You know what, I wanna do the sciences one because I want lots of science. Science is good. So he gives us some rare metals and a unique treasure. So we get extra study and a fossil. Let's see what this fossil does. It gives us eight study, oh my gosh. Okay, we just got so much study. Um, wow. Wow, okay, that was really good for us. Um, okay, this screen, I'll explain why that was good in just a second. Uh, this screen tells us that we were aggressive, um, which uh, will change some of the dialogue and things throughout the, the game, depending on how you mostly act. Um, these are our two treasures, uh, which give us insight, renown, and bonuses. Um, these are all the tokens we collected and what we gained from the tokens. So for example, uh, the collect gives us gold, uh, the campaign gives us status, this gives us research, and the encounter gives us gold and status. All right, hold on one second. I'm going to go let my dog out. I may or may not edit my letting my dog out in post-production, but for right now, I'm just going to go let her out. So hold on. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, I know. Unprofessional. Um, it's the worst. Hey, my first video, guys. Come on. Jeez. All right, hold on, let me put my headphones back on here. All right, so those are our resources, this is everything we gathered. Uh, when we continue, it will take us back uh, to London. London is where, or well, the world map, essentially, is where we're gonna spend all of our um, supplies. Okay, so after you finish the first tutorial mission, uh, you'll get this uh, badge. You always get this, uh, this always happens. You get 50 renown, you get one insight. And you gain the ability to carry three more supplies. So instead of seven supplies, we'll take 10 supplies. 
uh, on every adventure. So we'll take that treasure. Um, we, this explains to us what we're gonna, what we can do. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do that uh, for the game. So again, here's our explorers. Uh, on the left side, we can manage our crew and inventory. Okay, this is where we're gonna talk about research papers. So research papers um, allow you to buy perks. Uh, these perks are very important and kind of managing them uh, to the best of your ability will allow you to kind of skyrocket, honestly, uh, pretty far into the game. So we got a lot of research because uh, at the end of that, we got a lot of study tokens. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to unlock preparation. Uh, and the reason I like to start here instead of Chronicles, uh, these other four um, we'll talk about in a minute, but or we'll talk about after the next adventure. These unlock um, after you complete your second expedition. Um, but anyway, I like to unlock preparation first, uh, and you should too if you're following this as kind of a walkthrough. Uh, the reason is because starting this project gains you bonus study whenever you spend insight. Um, so essentially this allows you to get more research. So it's where you spend research to get more research. So I'm gonna unlock that. And then you get these bonuses here as well. Um, like this one, for example, gets us one insight and gets us one insight every time we finish an expedition. Uh, that's good to get now because we'll get three more insight over the course of the game uh, than we would otherwise. So look, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Um, and then we have the option to make uh, upgrading things cost less status, uh, which is good to get um, after the next adventure. You won't really need it here. Um, but we do want tools of the trade uh, because tools allow us to increase our odds of winning on that spinning wheel by an extra 25%. So we like tools. Um, we'll definitely use those. Uh, the Explorer's Toolkit gets you another tool, um, which, is, which is good. Uh, I really like field rations. So we need tools of the trade and opening doors to get field rations. Okay, so we spent our research. We need 50 more research to get field rations. So let's see if we can get 50 more research. And how we're gonna do that is by first spending our status. Uh, so to spend status, you go down here and click on Entourage. Um, and you can either spend your status to upgrade your Entourage. Uh, you can also spend status here at the item shop to upgrade your item shop, um, which we're not gonna need to do that yet. We'll do that after the next adventure. So we'll go back to Entourage. Um, we can recruit these um, helpers. Uh, these helpers will get us bonuses. For example, the lobby, lobbyist, makes it whenever we have a campaign token, we get extra status. Merchant is gold for collect tokens. Student is research from study. I'm going to be getting study tokens because I want more research. So I might as well pick up these two helpers. Okay, so that was everything I had. Um, there's also specialists. These guys can be really good. For example, gain an extra campaign token if I resolve a counter aggressive. I'm mostly aggressive, so this would be really good for me. Um, so I'll probably pick that up after the next adventure. Um, but for now, I've got my helpers. Uh, I'm gonna get more research anytime I do a token. I'm gonna go down here to the jobs. Uh, you see these have a insight icon next to them. This is where I spend my insight. Uh, you can save this up if you want, but I really wanna get, I really wanna go to get this research here. Extra supplies uh, for every single adventure. That's really, really good. Um, if I could complete all of these, It'd be even better because then I get even more tokens for spending insight. So that would be really nice, but I don't think I'll be able to do that here. Instead, I'm gonna click. Uh, you can either get um, collect tokens here, um, campaign tokens here, or um, research tokens here. So I want the research. Uh, all of my characters get the same amount. If you, sometimes if you have a uh, scientist, you'll get bonus ones. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and spend an insight to gain 20 research. Now, how many do I need to buy an upgrade? 50. So that's probably gonna be two more, which is fine. Unless I get lucky. Oh, nope. Okay, so I've got my 50. That's fine. We're gonna spend it, we're gonna get extra rations. And I wanna save these for after I complete the preparation tree because that gets me extra tokens. Um, this game is really about optimizing your resources. Um, and the order you do stuff on here matters. Um, before you get any tokens, you wanna make sure that you've bought, this is just a general rule, okay? If you're following, this is a walkthrough again. Um, before you get any tokens, you wanna to make sure you've bought helpers and specialists uh, because those uh, will help you get more from your tokens, okay? Uh, certain characters, like there's one captain 
who the more research you get, the more powerful her tokens become. Uh, so you would want to research everything before you got tokens. Okay. I uh, usually go shopping last uh, based on how much money I have. Uh, your starting equipment is garbage. Um, it's really important to have better defenses. So I'm going to buy defensive items. I like to buy defensive items that make up for their weaknesses. Some other people may do it differently. Um, so for example, he has low speech defense, high armor. So I'm going to buy him uh, the memento instead of the armor. That increases his speech defense. Again with him. I don't want him to get killed by one speech. Uh, and then she's a scout. Boots are for scouts uh, because they increase their grit. So I could increase her defenses. I'd rather increase her grit uh, because that allows her to dodge attacks better. I'd rather have her just dodge an attack um, than take damage from it. And I could also go through and I'm gonna go ahead and sell these because I don't need them. Um, see if I wanted to buy anything else, but there's really nothing else for me to buy. Um, that's kind of the end of that. Uh, so that's kind of, we managed everything we had. Uh, we spent everything we could. Um, we have a little gold left over, but that'll be good for us next time. After you've done all of that, you want to click on Choose Expedition. You notice we got three more supplies plus two more from our, um, from our research papers, which is great. So here's where we can go next. I'm going to zoom in. We can go to the Hungarian Fort, uh, Molly Mystery, or the Caribbean Island. Uh, when you choose where you want to go, you want to read what it has to say. I like to go to the most difficult one I can, if you're prepared, and then read what what kind of approach would be best. So here, for example, an aggressive approach would be good. I should expect nature and technic challenges. Um, the nature one, I'm, I have a survivalist, so I should be pretty okay on those. Um, if I wanted to go to the mystery one, a friendly approach would be better. I would expect gold with rogue athlete and beguiler challenges, okay? Uh, over here, it doesn't really tell me what kind of adventure it is, but I'll, I should expect archaeologist, quick thinker, diplomat challenges, and status. So I'll, I'm going to be going to the uh, Caribbean island. I know you fight a lot of pirates here. I want to level my characters up, um, so that's what I'm looking to do. Uh, so this is probably where I'm going to go, uh, but I will do that next time um, on part two of our walkthrough. So again, on part one, uh, we kind of talked about the battle system. Uh, we talked about spending your resources. Um, if you've been following along, you should have finished your first island. Um, again, that's kind of random, so it's hard for me to tell you how to do that. Uh, but when you get to the screen, you should have you know, spent your campaign, bought your research papers, gotten more tokens if you needed them uh, to upgrade your research uh, and be ready to go. Um, so spend your resources. Uh, get ready to go. Uh, if you're following along and you have an aggressive team, you'll be wanting to go to the Caribbean island with me next time. Uh, so until then, this is uh, Cyrus signing off, uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Later.